What's going on with Tat? Tell us a little what's going on, Marie. Well, um, I have a, I have this upcoming fight, uh, the February 27th um, in Miami, uh, Florida. And uh, uh, well, first, it, it had been scheduled for December 19th on the, under the Canelo versus the Smith uh, fight card. But my opponent, Diego Pacheco, from uh, Los Angeles, he actually got a, a stomach virus at the moment, uh, at, back then, and the fight was, was canceled. Thankfully, it, it got, you know, redone, and, and now it's rescheduled for the, the, the 27th of February. Okay, well, let, me, let me go back a little bit. We, how many amateur fights? Let me go back. How many amateur fights do you have? I did 11, uh, 11 or 12. I, I'm not sure. I did 11 or 12 amateur fights. And um, I don't know. It was something that back then, well, when, when I first started, uh, started being an amateur, really, it was only me in the gym. So we didn't travel that much. We didn't, you know, I never got to go to big tournaments. I, I only went to uh, the Golden Gloves once. And... Uh, that's it. Uh, I, I didn't feel like I didn't have the speed and the, probably not only the speed, but also the, what do you call it? Like the fast pace uh, box, uh, amateur boxers require to have a, a successful career in amateur. Uh, I was more, I guess because I, I, I was always, you know, seeing my dad and my uncle, you know, train and spar. I, I kind of got that type of sparring uh, or, or fighting technique, you know, of being more patient, being more uh, of a counter puncher and a boxer than, than, a, than an aggressive fighter at the moment. And amateur required a lot of, of aggression, a lot of, of punches, and, and I, that wasn't my style since I was a kid. So I never felt very comfortable with, with, with amateur I wish I would have done. Now that I'm, you know, that I'm old, that I'm older, and uh, I'm in in a professional boxing. I know I recognize that if I would have had a better amateur career, probably I would have been uh, probably seen seen by better promoters or or have better opportunities uh, when when it came down to to moving up to to professional. But uh, now we're here and we're doing pretty good, I think. And uh, hopefully we just keep improving and there's a lot of space for that. So, you know, Coach Jaime Cantu, my uncle and my father, they, they're trying to, to do the, their best jobs to bring the best fighter out of me. They, I appreciate that. Let me, now, can you interpret for me for your father? And your father, now how many fights, sir, Mr. Rudy is senior, right? How many fights, yeah. you, how many fights did you have, sir? ¿Cuántos peleas hiciste, Mookie? Dice, alrededor de... 56 peleas, no todas salen en, en box break, pero dice alrededor de 56 peleas. He did around 56 uh, professional fights. Um, not, not all of them come out on, on, on box break, but uh, yeah, he did most, uh, he, the, close to uh, between 56 and, and 60 fights, that's more or less what he did. How was his record? How, 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 he did pretty good, 56 a lot of fights, so he did pretty good, right? Yeah, he ha he has a good record actually. He did a good record. Uh, he did most of his campaign. Uh, his best campaign, his best years were actually uh, in California and in, in Baja, in Baja by uh, Mexicali and you know over there by Calexico and over there he did uh, great campaigns over there. Yeah, right. So he followed your uncle. He trained you, your uncle trained you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, hi, hi, me. I appreciate it, man. Like I said, my anyway, this is new for me. Zoom classes just, or Zoom. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, to, to be honest, can like I say, I'll say this over and over again. I'm I'm very happy for you guys to be on a Canelo fight. You know, I, I mean, uh, I mean, you've been on some big main events because you fought with your son, some big uh, tower fights, but this Canelo Alvarez is a big fight. This is, you know, there's a lot of boxers out there. A lot of all the boxers all over the world. We want to fight a Canelo Alvarez fight. All every boxer want to fight Canelo. No, let me rephrase. A lot of world champions would love to fight on this card too. You know what I'm saying? It's a great fight if you get opportunities, right, Jaime? Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, this is a, you know, timing is everything in boxing, and uh, Rudy is a, he's a consummate professional. He's always in the gym. His family supporting him. He's always ready, and, and 
fights have fallen through and I've told them just stay ready son, because an opportunity will come and here it is um Press we're gonna that. fight on the Canelo undercard that that that's the headline uh as for our opponent that that's not an issue for us right. <laughs> you know we we are fighting on the Canelo undercard uh will be televised again it's it's one of the greatest draws in boxing to see a Canelo fight and uh, people tune in, tune in early. They're going to see the undercard, and we're going to be there. And uh, Rudy's going to perform for all that audience. And uh, this is our time. This is his time. Rudy, your, your record is uh, 48, 14 wins and 10 loss, or ten knockouts, right? Is that right? Is that the record? I got a box record. Uh, yeah, I think I think in, it, it's a little bit uh, – I think I'll – I'm also missing some, uh, I don't know, one or two fights on, on, on uh, Box Rick as well. Okay, okay. You got stuck a little bit. You're okay. Yes, yeah, something happened. It's okay. It's okay. We got it. No, it's, it's a great. You have a good record. But you know what, Marie? Also, you know what? It's, it's like, like Jaime said, you know, you got to be, be ready. It's your time. It's your time to shine. For the show the boxer what you can do. Not to fool out. You know what I'm saying? Go on, give the guys in this. Um, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's a. Yes. Yes, he's a he's a up and coming prospect. He's a uh, you know he's he's well known uh, because of matchroom boxing. You know, has made a, a good you know campaigns with him. But uh, I believe that he hasn't fought a uh, opposition tough opposition like he he's been fighting short guys and and being a tall fighter like him like he is and i am uh fighting shorter guys is always easier to keep him at bay with the long jab and and it's easier to catch him at the end of your punches but uh i believe he hasn't fought a a, a fighter with a with a boxing ability that i possess i believe that that i can um uh, that i can not only uh, beat him, but I can. I think I can. I can get a knockout as well. I think he he's too young right now. He's 19. I'm not saying that because he's 19, he's not good. Actually, I recognize that he's a good fighter. He's a really good fighter, but but, but I think that he's still tender. You know, I already went through that age. I, I started fighting at that age. Actually, I started professionally uh, at 19, and and I remember fighting uh, fighters that were my age at that time. And I, I was fighting guys that were in their early 30s or late 20s. And the power feels different, you know. It feels different because you, you're tender. You're, you're still young. You're still young. And, uh, uh, you, you know, sometimes I came, up, I came up with victories most of my fights. But uh, that doesn't mean I didn't feel the power. I didn't feel the difference of, of, of the age difference and stuff like that. A lot of people think that. You know, he him being 19 and me being 31, he has a, a age uh, advantage, and I I disagree. I think the age advantage is on my side because now I'm a I'm a mature man. I can take punches a lot differently, a lot better, and I can hit a lot harder now, and I have more experience when it comes down to being in there with a tough opponent with or being in. in uh, in a fight where it gets, you know, it gets tough. You know, I, I've been, I've been with a broken hand in a fight. I've been with a torn tendon. I've been with a broken uh, nose in a fight. Things that he hasn't gone through yet. And I, I'm sure that if I give him that, that those type of problems, I think the whole perspective of of the fight's gonna change. You know, I'm, you're right. You're right about that. You're right. You know, you got ring savage, a lot of ring savage. You know, I, I, I start following you. Well, I saw Jaime told me about you when you fought Ricardo. That's when we started hanging out or I started watching stuff on YouTube. R Ricardo Mayorga, he fought yeah. that and he stopped him. You gotta understand that that's a bad boy. A lot of people, even though he was, he had some wars already before. Sugar Shea Mosey, De La Hoya, um, he fought Fernando Vargas. I think Fernando, I think he stopped Fernando, right? I think he stopped. Fernando. Yeah, yeah, he stopped him. I think I think he did like in the ninth, yeah. somewhere around there. And he's no joke. He's no joke. For you to stop the TKO, TKO and stop him, right? He stops him. Yeah, well, he, he, you know, that's one thing that I, I agree with. Um, even going into that fight, I remember saying, you know what? He's an old, washed-up fighter. You know, he's not the same he was. But then again, uh, during the fight, he proved 
why he was at the level he was. You know, he he uh, he's a fighter that knows how to take a punch and can definitely give one back. So, you know, the experience that that he, that he has it really just kind of like motivate me to to train harder and, and be ready for that because. Of, I mind you, with a uh, fighter with that type of experience can change any type of fight with with one 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 hit with, with one blow. So, you know, it was it was a good fight. It was a good uh, learning experience for me, and uh, I really don't take anything away from him, even uh, as he was a uh, an older fighter at the moment, because, like I said, his experience could have a uh, right. Because of his experience, he, the fight could have gone a whole different way. Right. You know, you know, a lot of people, a lot, you're right about that. A lot of people will say, you know, that, that uh, it's good to stay with one person. I, you, what you did was you went with Jaime Cantillo and you went back with your dad and uncle. That, to me, I think that's smart. You get different, you get different feels. And both good, strong team. I mean, you went to Jaime, Jaime teaches different stuff. Your dad, you know your dad and uncle already. But this is, and you're both on the same page. You know what I'm saying? Good, Jaime. You guys, Jaime? Yeah, yeah, you know what, Paul? Uh, uh, you 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 called it exactly like it is. But I'll tell you what. I I think the my I've been working with Rudy and the family for years now, and uh, but I I believe the Mayorga fight finally allowed uh, the Gomez training mentality and then the Cantu training mentality to 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 work together. So, you know, Gomez fighting is a very tough fighters. You know, they're tough. They're Mexican warriors. And it's a beautiful thing to see. But, you know, I'm West Coast. You know, I, I like to stick and move a little bit more and set things up you know, and take time. So in the in my Arthur fight, uh, had Rudy executed what the Gomez has wanted, he, you know, I'm, I'm going to say probably would have tried to knock him out within a round or two, to be very honest with you. But I told him, be patient. Be patient. Let's set it up. Let, let's, let's see the pattern. Let's see what he's doing. And so... Six six rounds of some really elite, beautiful counter punching, um, slipping punches, and then all of a sudden his uncle gave him that speech, and his dad said, "Hey, the time is now." And sure enough, Rudy flipped it, flipped the switch, and you know knocked him out. It was it was beautiful. So Rudy uh, is blessed to have you know old school Mexican trainers as his uh, father and uncle, and then he has a West Coast slick fighter that uh that, you know, can, can strategize a fight. So uh, we're peaking right now. It's a really good time. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, yeah. I didn't hear that, but he said, but you just said, uh, he gave you the word. Who gave you your word? Who told you, Rudy? Your dad, your uncle told you in the corner. Yeah. Well, what do you say? Uh, what honestly, do you say? It, it was a, like, it's like Coach said, Co Coach Jaime Cantu said, it was, it was a mixture of both worlds, you know, and, and that's, that's, a, that was the key to our victory because, uh, like he said, my, my uncle and my dad, they're, they like, they're technicians as well, but they, you know, they're more Mexican style. They're more uh, aggressiveness. They're more going forward. And Coach Cantu really uh, uh, has polished my skills when it comes down to, to boxing, sticking and moving, you know. The, that's, a, that's the name of the game, you know, hit and not get hit. And, and I think we did a, a great camp for, for that fight. And uh, the same as we're doing now, I think even better now. Because now, like I said, I, I matured a lot with that fight. Um, Coach Cantu always uh, tries to give me the best advice, not only inside, but outside of the ring. And see, boxing is a lifestyle. So everything that you put into play in your, in your life, it comes into play in a fight as well. You know, the, you have to be responsible. You have to take responsibility for your, for your mistakes. And, and also, you know, if, if your effort will pay off at the end of the day. And I remember going in, into the corners uh, between rounds, going to the corner between rounds and, and asking, you know, my dad and my uncle, How, how's it looking? How's it going? Then asking coach, coach, what are you, what are you seeing? And I remember something that I remember so, so clear that we train in, in Coach Cantu's uh, gym in Kingsville. In Kingsville. It was uh, some movements, some strategy movements that, that went into play in the late rounds and it was beautiful the way it came out because it came out just natural. It just came out the way that we had done it in the gym. And it's a it's a beautiful thing when when your strategy comes into play perfectly because that means that you did it, that you worked so hard to make it work. 
in the fight, you know, and to me, even at this, even during these times, I sometimes see it and I see that moment where I have him, I have him in a corner. I don't know how coach really thought, you know, he, he, he predicted that if, even before the fight, he said, okay, we got a, a fighter in his game and he was like, okay, get in the corner. And he got into the corner. He says, okay, Rudy, this is what I want you to do. You're going to fake. You're going to come to this side and bam, bam, you know? So, and then he said, okay, if he stays there, then you're going to move. You're going to do the same movement, but throwing a punch at the same time. And, and then I was like, okay, you know, I just did it. I didn't know it was actually going to happen in the fight, but sure enough, it happened. And when it did happen, I was like, I went back to the gym at that moment. You know, at that moment during the fight, I went back to the gym and I was like, okay, this is what I trained for. This is exactly what they, you know, I didn't, it was it's something so funny, but it's, it's something that you get to appreciate, even though that you're in there, you know, you go back to the gym and say like, okay, I did this in the gym. I can do it here also. So I did it and it, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful thing, you know? Uh, let me, let me, I think that's good. Let me ask your father, ask your father and tell us about it. Sir, uh, senior. How, how do you think about your son? How's he looking? How's he looking? ¿Cómo piensas que me estoy viendo ahorita en el gimnasio? Pues vamos muy bien. Vamos. Está haciendo lo que le estamos pidiendo respecto al al contrincante que va que va a enfrentar. Ya nada más nos falta meternos de lleno bien al peso, pero vamos caminando bastante bien. Vamos a llegar en óptimas condiciones. He says that he likes what he's been seeing, that you know, we've been doing things uh, according to the opponent that we have. And uh, that right now, the only thing we need to, to do is just get to uh, to the exact weight, but we're walking on a, on a good way right now. And, uh, and we're gonna be there on, uh, to be in optimum condition. All right, guys. Listen, I appreciate this very much. Really, you know, I do. It's Zoom is hard. I'd rather really be one on one with the person. You know what I'm saying? Because this is of different. Of course. <laughs> you know, but uh, but listen, I'm gonna be out in Texas, Dallas, Texas, around the 12th to 13th. I know you, you. You hopefully we can run into each other. You come out there to hire me, hire me out there in Dallas, Texas. So listen, I wish you the hopefully, best. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully we'll be there. We, we actually, my one of my dad's fighters will be fighting on uh, March 13 on the Chocolatito style fight. Is so. That right? Yeah, Jorge Castaneda will be fighting there against Ota Jones. So we'll be there. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so then I can interview. I want to interview your dad, but I want to do it in Spanish. I want it in Spanish. I got it in Spanish. You be an interpreter for me, okay? I appreciate that. Of course, well, definitely. Can, definitely. You can't, can't do that. I mean, can't understand my speech. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> my brother. Listen, my brother. I got love, Mr. Sir. Sir, thank you very much. I appreciate your dad. Much love. Doing thank it. you. I'm going to post this. Uh, Oh, 